Greatly magnified, a mineral oil can be represented as countless individual molecules in constant motion. The hotter the oil, the more agitated the molecules become and the oil gets thinner. To control this, a chemical additive is introduced. It consists of a complex molecule that expands with heat and restricts the movement of the smaller oil molecules. On cooling, it returns to its original size. So the oil maintains a consistent viscosity over a wide temperature range, the familiar property of a multigrade. Improving viscosity helps the oil to withstand some of the loads on working parts, but it doesn't go far enough. In many of today's engines, foam loads and speeds can be extremely high. It's controlled where by an anti The gearbox is built in. But it's the presence of oxygen whisked into the body of the oil that does the real harm. Imagine the gear teeth as a set as the of oil powerful heats nutcrackers. Up. They can literally shear the oil molecules apart. Viscosity breaks down and the oil is thrown out, exposing the metal surfaces to overheating and catastrophic damage. To enable the lubricant to cope, a different kind of additive is used. It consists of molecules which bond chemically with the metal under intense frictional heat. They form a protective layer allowing the surfaces to slide over each other without damage. While some additives enhance the lubricating properties of the oil, others are needed to protect the oil itself from the hostile environment of the engine. An engine is like a giant egg whisk, mixing air intimately with the oil. Too much foam reduces lubricating efficiency. It's controlled by an anti-foaming agent. But it's the presence of oxygen whisked into the body of the oil that does the real harm. As the oil heats up, it oxidizes and thickens. The hotter the oil, the more readily it oxidizes. Left unchecked, carbon builds up on the valves and piston crowns. This can lead to pre-ignition or to knocking. To arrest the oxidation process, another additive is introduced. It renders the oxygen molecules inactive. This keeps valves and piston crowns free of carbon, but the high temperatures and pressures around the piston skirt produce a further problem, lacquering. Gummy deposits of half-burnt fuel and oil cause the rings to stick, leading to piston wear and loss of power. To stop this happening, a detergent additive is used. It won't make a dirty engine clean, but it does form a protective barrier on metal surfaces and prevents gummy deposits from sticking to them. It keeps the metal clean, but at the expense of contaminating the oil. In any engine, complete combustion of the fuel is rare, and this causes problems particularly in diesels. Under high compression, half-burnt gases, fuel and particles of carbon are blown past the pistons into the oil. By themselves, the carbon particles are far too small to do any harm. It takes three million of them to cover a pinhead. In the cooler parts of the engine, however, they tend to join together with water, resins and acids and settle as a thick sludge, obstructing oilways and clogging filters. A dispersant additive prevents this. A 
film of insoluble chemical forms around each particle, keeping them separate and small enough to pass easily through the oil filter and between the working parts. Even when an engine stops, the oil is still open to attack. As the metal surface is cool, water droplets form. Water encourages rust. It also combines with sulfur and hydrogen compounds to produce highly corrosive acids in the oil. The alkalinity of the base oil neutralizes some of the acids. But further protection is given by an anti-corrosion additive which coats the metal surfaces with an impermeable layer. No oil can last forever. Cooling, cleaning and protecting, its components are gradually used up and have to be replenished. What matters is how well they've done their job. Oils, like the engines they serve, are constantly developing and changing. The more efficient and powerful engines become, the more stringent the demands they make on the oil. Engines also vary considerably in their design whether petrol or diesel, air-cooled or rotary. Each has its own particular lubrication needs. They can only be met by studying the effects on engine performance of each of the oil's components in turn. Tests are needed to ensure that the base oils used are chemically stable and have the necessary range of properties. And to assess the precise effect of various additives in improving flow, increasing resistance to wear, and preventing corrosion. But the real skill comes not just in selecting the best components, but in achieving a delicate balance between them, so that each can make its optimum contribution without interfering chemically with the performance of any other, and so remain fully effective from one oil change to the next. The result is a range of high-quality engine oils that can be trusted to do their job, whatever your engine, and however extreme the conditions under which it has to work.